So here's the thing. Uh, we've been kind of tardy with our duties. Not that anybody cares, mind no. you. But uh, still, we felt the responsibility. And I guess it's time to catch up with the MCU. Because we kind of put it to the side for a while. Yeah. I think like we- our friend the Guardian, we just kind of felt like we've reached a form of completion with the first uh, epoch of, of the Marvel Universe. I also think we've been indulging in our own MCU, mega crappy underbellies. Yeah, <laughs> dude, let me tell you. It's getting dirty. It's not good. So we put the the cleansing of the underbellies to the side and decided, let's do something less disgusting. That is, see, yeah, catch up, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this video, we're going to just, the last three movies that came out, we're, we're just barely seeing them. Yeah. This is going to catch up. And let's start off with Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. I'm going to be straight up honest. Even as a comic fan for a long ass time, you know, uh, I know very little about Shang-Chi. Yeah. Uh, I feel that after the watching the movie, I feel like I still know very little about the comic Shang-Chi. That's true. Because I'm willing to bet they changed a lot. Because it just seems that way. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Yeah. I'm saying that Shang-Chi probably wasn't cool. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> the this, comics. Is, this is the Blade of of uh, Asian guy films. Yeah, Marvel yeah. Movies. It got, yeah, like Blade got cool when when the wesley snipes movie came out let's be honest here yeah. it's not that he was shit but he did that, wear that suit he did wear that shitty suit guy yeah, if you don't know what we're talking about look, look up, up the blade original suit it's fucking stinky <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> you know uh blade was very much uh, a product of its time it, i'm talking the comic book you know they were they were, they were kind of catering to uh, or trying to appeal to that the black audience mm-hmm. and they did it in kind of like a weird way that that wasn't exactly Mm, you know uh pc maybe yeah. a little but he was still fine enough you know but yeah wesley snipes blade that's where it's at yeah. i think the same thing can happen here with shang chi <sighs> because i know one thing about shang chi in the comics he was like half white because they were like there's no way anybody's yeah, gonna accept a full-on asian uh but so anyway as far as me trying to compare it to the comics i i can't say yeah. because I, you know i haven't read too many also... shang chi comics I'm going to take this stance uh-huh. because I don't want you to get uh, thrown under the bus. Okay. The bu- there is a bus in this. There is a uh, big bus. I feel like 99% of people don't give a shit about Shang-Chi uh, comic version. Uh, again, that might be a controversial stance, but it's a, it's a hill that I will die on, God I, damn it. I think you're right. Also, 100% of people give zero shits about Eternals. Yeah. <laughs> the movie and the comics. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, look... Uh, yeah, I don't think it's controversial. I don't think that's controversial at all. No. Nobody, not, if anybody claimed there were a Shang Chi fan before the movie, I'm sure there's one guy. Out there. I'm sure there's one guy, <laughs> and literally that one guy. That's it, you know. Uh, so anyway, whatever. I don't know jack shit about the comics. Mm. Very little about him, I should say. So uh, can't speak to the loyalty, but I can speak to this movie. And Marvel has kind of done, or has had a history of making characters that technically shouldn't catch on very well with an audience uh you know i mean iron man i guess is the ultimate example they they, they made a character that though to comic fans meant a lot unlike shang chi <laughs> yeah. uh you know to the general pop- populace who who, who who gave a shit really you know what i'm saying and they made him acceptable and they made him super cool and all that stuff uh so shang chi i feel like they had their work cut out for him because as aforementioned nobody gave a shit about him really uh do i think they succeeded uh, and all honesty, I think they did. I think this is a pretty entertaining movie. I think it's a brisk movie. Yeah. It, it has a really... I think th- this is the biggest thing that they did in its favor. They made it a briskly paced movie, one. Two, they made it a movie that felt like it wasn't condescending to the viewer. Like, playing it too comic-y to the point where you're lost. Or playing it too dumb to the point where you're like, come on, guy, just stop. I get it. I think they made a nice blend of a Hollywood movie, a superhero movie, and the Wuxia movie, which is kind of impressive. And mm-hmm. I will say this, in terms just, of the Wuxia uh, stuff... Pretty ahead. cool, because we usually uh, indulge in Fushi movies. <laughs> well, that's just the story of our lives. Yeah. Look up our uh, documentary, Fushi! <laughs> <laughs> Not Wuxia no. is, is the subtitle. But anyway, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, when it comes to Wuxia movies, uh, a lot of, you know, you know kind of like the martial arts where everybody you know physics don't really apply fly around that type of shit is what i'm talking about when it comes to wuxia movies uh they're usually encumbered by low budgets you know and they achieve a lot don't get me wrong uh especially given that but here we have you know like a full budgeted movie where you can indulge in that and then still have i think they struck a nice balance of all those things 
without ever devolving too much into, uh, you know, a territory that panders too much to one specific audience. Yeah. Also, this is a movie that has a different culture that the standard American audience, for example, doesn't usually get to see, and that's the Asian culture. And I think they did a pretty decent job at that. Although I will say that uh, the Asian drivers kind of are reckless. Yeah, and uh, apparently they like karaoke. So I'm just saying that they may be, you know, yeah, but, uh, whatever. We, we started watching this and I was like, was this, is this the most racist movie of 2021? Because, <laughs> man, homie. I thought that was pretty cool, man. I mean, they, you know, we instinctually, I think a lot of people, especially of the older ilk, will make broad assumptions about other cultures that are very stereotypical. Uh, but, you know, I think the younger, younger generations understand that while there are, are still cultural differences with, in this case, Asian Americans and white Americans, etc., uh, you know, they've adopted a lot of American culture and kind of put their own twist on it. Yeah. And I feel like, like Shang-Chi or Sean, as he's initially known, and, and, and Katie, played by Aquafina. Uh, I think they depict that pretty well. And I think, you know, it doesn't feel insulting because that's yeah. kind of like what the modern ilk of yeah, Asian that, American is. That was kind of a smart way to go about it yeah. with the two characters that are kind of Americanized because it could have easily felt that something like too much, you know, mm -hmm. too much of the Asian thing. That sounds racist. In the 70s, it would have passed. <laughs> that sounded racist, but you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, the, yeah. The more you, 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 you are, the more generations that, are, that come into this country and grow up here, yeah. the more there is a mix. There's a new culture that blooms yeah, yeah, out yeah. of it. And I think they depicted this well in subtle ways and other ways. Like, even the soundtrack kind of reflects that. You yeah. know, we know that hip-hop and Asian culture yeah, are I, very I, intermingled. I will say I really like the, the, the soundtrack, meaning the the score. Mm -hmm. Not so much the actual, like, selection, the music selections that could do without them, whatever. But the actual, like, music, the score that they made for it was actually pretty cool. Which is something you can never really say about a Marvel movie. We've had a lot of boring Marvel scores, we'll say that. Yeah, I agree with that. And I even like the soundtrack selections. Not so much because I like the songs. Mm, but they because fit I, in the movie, yeah. yeah. they fit into the flavor of it. Yeah. And, and they give it a distinct feel. So it does feel very different to a lot of Marvel movies in that sense. And then just visually, because of all the elements that are coming to play... That feels different. Yeah. So that's kind of refreshing, man. Which, in all honesty, we we needed in the Marvel Universe. So that was a, a pleasant surprise. Now, uh, we did talk to our boy Logan. Or I did talk to our boy Logan. And, uh, uh, you know, one of our, our loyal viewers. And he was like, dude, you're going to hate this movie. And I was like, why? And he was like, well, there's this annoying comic mm -hmm. relief person. And I was like, are you talking about Aquafina? And he's like, yes. And I'm like, well, I'm going to tell you right Aquafina, now that I would mad marry Aquafina yeah, if I could. Especially if she's if she's uh, playing Danny DeVito and Jumanji too. Yes, classic. <laughs> uh, I love Aquafina. And uh, I'll agree that uh, Marvel's universe, Mar the, the MCU's uh, handle on comedy has been kind of rough. Sometimes it's susceptible to people. Sometimes it's groan-inducing. And sometimes it's a little too much. Even though even, you may like it, but it, they might be overbearing and i will say that to some people aquafina might come off yeah. as grating there was but there I, was a turn against her when this movie came out so no there was, was they tried, but that was because of something else yeah, well, yeah, was it? yeah they try to cancel her because you know she kind of speaks yeah come on guys. in a in a hood vernacular at times all i gotta say about that let's take a little sidetrack there all oh, i gotta shit. say about Side that is aquafina is from brooklyn if i if i if i remember correctly she's from new york anyway yeah you know, and she grew up in the in the hood. So yeah. that's how, how she talks. I'm sorry, but yeah, you know, you 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 take in the the environment around you, and that's you know, I think she's she wasn't doing it in any insulting way. Yeah. Is what I'm getting at. So I feel the ock <laughs> needs a pass yeah, on that end. I agree. She wasn't doing nothing offensive. She was just doing her thing. But anyway, I love Aquafina, uh, but I understand that some people find. A comic relief character grading but i think they actually showed a lot of restraint they could have yeah. done way too much with it i agree she does have like little moments that are, you could see people finding annoying but we like her so we didn't mind them yeah and uh there is a surprising amount of restraint with her and with ben kingsley um, yeah yeah you know they could have easily just made them fart around and rip each other's assholes they could have made them fart like the hulk and thor Ragnarok. yes they could have done that but I they, hated that. But they kind of didn't. They was kind of yeah. restrained. You know, it was a moderate amount from what you would expect to be characters that are constantly pouring that time of humor. Yeah. Um, so I was fine with that, actually. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I thought it was cool. Uh, uh, I wouldn't mind, mind seeing Aquafina fart. I'm just saying. 
Well, that's a whole other deal, guy. Well, Give me an Aquafina fart video and I'm in. <laughs> yeah, I'm you know what I'm saying? There's something about her. I'm just saying. Yeah, I like but, her uh, farts. I like her teeth. They're weird, but I like them. You like her teeth? That's weird, isn't it? I like her weird lower half shape. Yeah. Yeah. We're just making her sound We're like a monster. Just, yeah. Speaking of monsters. <laughs> her teeth. <laughs> speaking of monsters, there's a Lovecraftian kind of element to the, uh, I guess, entity that, that might be unleashed by the villain in this movie. And that's always a vibe we can dig if it's done right. It wasn't, uh, I don't think so anyway, fully intended to be Lovecraftian. But clearly there's shades of it. Mm. Because we know this is going to link into the multiverse of madness. Yeah. And that's, of course, toying with that type of uh, you know feel uh, anyway. So I dug that. It would have been pretty cool to see more of it. But, yeah. but you know, I, that's not really what the movie was about. And that's, that's where I got to say that this is what I like most about this movie. Is that it's a Marvel movie that has a strong thematic that it never, you know, gets too dis distracted from uh, building its characters on and the story on, you know. Uh, the movie's characters are all kind of uh, unable to move on and yet they're pursuing a purpose. And that's kind of like the big theme that that really pulls all these characters together and ultimately kind of makes the bad guy somewhat sympathetic because you can understand uh you know that he he was he was incapable of handling grief and letting it go yeah and uh there's even kind of a touching <sighs> exchange of you know passing of the baton if you will to his son uh after well about as he's about to die spoiler he's getting uh, sucked he's getting sucked guy yeah. by a big old drag on that is so uh yeah, I thought that was pretty cool, man. It's a yeah. that's a really rock solid it's thematic. Kinda, it's kind of a, a fresh thing for a Marvel movie where you kind of get these kind of cartoony villains, you know. Mm -hmm. With some exceptions, for the most part, it's just like they're there to die. Yeah. Technically, he does die, but it's it's a little but, different. But, uh, the they, way they go about it is different. Yeah, right? and they mind a lot that will benefit the main character. Yeah, and he is so played, that's cool. played very different for a villain too. He's oh, not yeah. just like yeah. ludicrous or anything. Mm -hmm. I kind of like that guy. He was pretty cool. Yeah. I like how they how they show the rings being used. That's pretty rad looking. That was new. If I have a small complaint, it would be that some of the action scenes could have breathed a little more. Mm -hmm. I think that there was a lot of intercutting in some of them. Specifically mm -hmm. like the, the, the skyscraper one was a little hard to follow for me. Uh, but it's a very small thing in very few scenes. For the most part, they're pretty easy to follow and cool. I'm going to go the opposite on that. I thought the action was pretty fucking clean cut, and and, and I think we'll agree that it was cool as yeah, hell. Yeah, it was cool. Uh, but I will agree with you 100% when it comes to the climactic battle, not with the the main villain in Shang-Chi, but with... Uh, well, the main villain is the Mandarin, by the way. Everybody should know this by now. But anyway, whatever. you know, Not that... But when the dragons come into play, yeah. uh, it kind of went into Transformersville for I agree. me. Yeah. Where I was like, what's happening in certain spots? I think Not as bad as Transformers. I think but... that one and for me, the, the skyscraper scene were kind of mm. a little hard to follow. Right. But the, but the rest of them were pretty fine. Yeah. I feel like, uh, yeah, the, 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 especially that ending one was like, uh, I, I, I would have wanted to see more of a grounded battle. We did get parts of that, but, uh, you know, the other side, the, the people that were helping the villagers in this mystical city and uh, uh, the Mandarin, the Ten Rings gang, basically. It would have been nice to see more of them yeah. doing stuff and maybe less of the dragons because they're big dragons. They could just have these big power scenes yeah. and then we can move on to other stuff. Uh, so it was just like kind of like a lot of effects going on. Yeah. And, it, it you know, but... It was still fine. It was nowhere near as bad as Transformers battle where you're like, what's going on? My eyes hurt. No, like I, that. I think it's just because so much of so many of the other fights are so well done that, that, that mm -hmm. those kind of stand out. As yeah. kinda like, also, I will point out that the copy that we were seeing is one that had to go through some uh, muxing. Yeah. So there was kind of like a muddiness to it. Was it was a little dark. Yeah. So it wasn't as sharp as uh, you know it should have been, but it wasn't. Uh, I don't know why. I mean, we're watching it on Disney Plus. Yes. Yes, we were. <laughs> Anyway, family, <laughs> family, 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 family. Not gonna pay Disney. Anyway, nope. uh, <laughs> even though I currently have Disney Plus, <laughs> damn it. Um, what else, guy? You got anything else to add to this? Uh, oh wait, uh, I think you'll agree with me on this. Yeah. We're all used to the credit sequence, and now you know the middle credit sequence. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say that the post credit sequence is cool. It sets up something potentially cool. I mean, it's not like excessively awesomely cool, but it's fine. 
you know, cool. Uh, but that middle credit sequence, I felt like all that could have been said at the end of the movie. I agree. When Wong came through the portal and was like, yeah. yo. Wong, you got... Wong was doing his thong? The Wong thong canong. Oh, shit. No. No. <laughs> Uh, I felt like all that could have been said, but I felt like they also were like, we got to put something yeah, here. Yeah, I agree. And we also got to put other characters from the MCU, so let's stick in uh, uh, fucking Mark Ruffalo, who's looking rough. Hello. Yeah, dude, he had white hair and shit. White hair. Broken I mean, arm. he's still probably doing the, the cancer bit, right? I don't think he beat it. Did he? Did he have cancer? Yeah, he has cancer. Oh, man. I, you know, so I like Mark Ruffalo, dude, I but like his Hulk Mark. sucks. Nah, dude, he was great in Avengers. I said his Hulk sucks, presently. Yeah, presently, you know. Agree. I didn't say his Hulk sucked. His but Hulk apparently, sucks. apparently, he, he's not the Hulk anymore. He's Bruce Banner in this, so something happened. Something she happened. She-Hulk coming in. Did you see those freaking promotional pictures for She-Hulk? They look terrible. Oh, they do? On Amazon, there was some of that art. Ooh. Bad. Anyway, anyway. I say it even though I haven't <laughs> seen them. Uh, I felt like that that was unnecessary. They could have said all that. Yeah, I agree. In fact, there would have been more urgency if Wong just busted in and said something along the lines that suggested what they do say in that middle credit Wong sequence. Wong doing a stong, yeah. Uh, as it stands, that middle credit sequence, like, first of all, it feels, it looks fake as hell. It does. It was somehow <laughs> the worst. Of, maybe that's why they put, maybe that's why they cut it off. They're like, man, uh, Maybe. Uh, and then second, you know, again, it just feels kind of like they needed to put that there because that's what people expect. Uh, what what else you got, man? Any, anything? I feel like as an abomination fan, the abomination keeps uh, getting in the shaft in the MCU. <laughs> oh yeah, he looks ugly. Uh, here, he guys. looks terrible, and he's got his underwear on. And I guess he's friends with Wong. So he's that's got that thing. pasted face look. Yeah, which he didn't even have in the Incredible Hulk. He granted he looked like shit he in the Incredible pretty Hulk. Bad, yeah, but he didn't have the pasted face look. Mm-hmm. Although I will say that uh, what's his name, Tim Roth. Yeah. Uh, he had the pasted body ah, look the abs, <laughs> in guy. The Incredible Hulk. Uh, so anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah, pleasantly surprised with with uh, Shang Chi, oh, man. Quite a bit, yeah. It was pretty cool. It's, it's a quick film, at least. If you, if you know. Yeah, you won't feel bored no. at all because you know it, it just it really just is one of those movies that off the cuff you're in the action. Yeah, you know. You might say that's a detriment to the character, but they actually found a cool way yeah. to develop the character's past because, you know, he's kind of a mystery character. So they do all these flashbacks yeah, that yeah. really flesh out the story and they're interspliced as the movie's moving along at a good pace. Really good way to introduce a character that people hardly know, I gotta say. So uh, let's get to a score or any thoughts you want to do before we do a score? Again? No, no, homie. Let's get to a final score on a scale of 1 to 10. Again, relative to Marvel movies. And... I think I'll give it a mad 7.5. It's a thoroughly enjoyable movie, but it's also not something that's amazing. Yeah, it's no um, Winter Soldier. It's not yeah, going to be that guy. But it is really fun, and, and for its fun factor, I'll give it a 7.5. Also, it's got Aquafina farting, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, man, I would pay... I would give it a 10 if it had Aquafina farting. That's a good function. Are yeah. we fart fans now? I get, I'm not a fart fan, either. but if Aquafina farts, I'm there. That's, that's a good I was going to say. Yeah. But... Um, yeah, I'll give it a I'll give it the same score, man. It, it was it was fun, it, and uh, I mean, what else do you want from this? And it, you know, again, the labor of introducing a new character, yeah, uh, especially one that clearly nobody gave a shit about. No one, dude. Uh, was very well handled, you know. So they they found a good way. Actually, looking forward to seeing more of this guy. See what he can do. Definitely want to see Aquafina fart. So uh, just put that out there to Part the two? MCU guys. Uh, Kevin Feige, Kevin Farty. Yep. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. Yep. Uh, we just saw the Eternals. Yeah. It's time to continue our, our catching up with the Marvel Universe. And let me tell you right now that I'm regretting catching up. Hey, stinky! <laughs> what thoughts? It's, uh, Eternals, does, does that talk about the length of time that it's, oh, it felt man. like watching it, it? It felt like forever. And I watched Communion earlier, which <laughs> let me tell you, felt like a breeze compared to this. Uh, Communion Stinks also happens to be about aliens, quote-unquote. Because the plot of this fucking movie is basically Eric Von Danken's Chariot of the Gods put through a grinder of comic book dumb, but then they spit-shine all the comic bookiness out of it and leave you with a big shining turd. And that turd happens to be boring. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man, I wish it wasn't, though. I like the idea of ancient astronauts. I like the idea of, of beings... Uh, uh, being responsible for, you know, humanity's advance. That's cool. That's cool concepts. I think that's cool material for a movie. 
or, or, or fiction, but this movie like flat out just fucked it all up again. I think the major issue, I don't know if you'll agree with me here, mm-hmm. I think the major issue with Eternals is that it had so much, but it tried to do everything at once, and all of it was superficial as a result. Yeah. All of it. There, there's no absolutely no depth to there's, any of this. Yeah, there's like zero freaking... Uh, well, you just said it, so... Yeah. It's, there's like zero freaking... Uh, even attempt to make it deep. It's kind of like stuff is just shown to you. There's moments of where you're like, yep, they're just telling you stuff. Yeah, man. And lots of exposition. Exposition is fine to build, to world build, but it's not fine when the stuff that's supposed to be character work and, and story work is... Is shallow, it's, it's just, so it just falls flat. It doesn't feel epic, you know. Exposition in a, in a movie of this nature should feel epic, and it doesn't. And the, the scenes that are visually supposed to be epic in it, they don't even feel epic because everything just feels like it's monotone and super, super, super thin, spread over what felt like about ten years. I think we lived as long as the Eternals in this movie. So did. I'm not gonna lie, my life energy has been sack- sucked. Yeah, that's it. It's just been sucked. It's 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 not. It's just not well executed, you know. Uh, let's start comic book with a comic book angle. Uh, I'm vaguely, you know, kind of like versed in the Eternals. They're not exactly a popular set of characters. They've had miniseries here and there. They appear mostly in other comics. Yeah, maybe you know? that's how it should have stayed. They really, that's another big. Glad you brought that up because that's another big issue with this movie. It feels like the concepts in this movie are very foundational. So why the fuck is this movie barely happening now? Yeah. You know, if they would if this movie would have happened at the beginning of the MCU and you know would have been a completely different movie because this it, one sucks. It feels like it doesn't fit into the MCU. It just doesn't at all. Man. Which is interesting because apparently originally it was supposed to end with the the, the Celestial Rising mm-hmm. and it being like a, a multiverse type of thing, which would have been better, I think. Yeah. Or really, it shouldn't have been made. Yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, this is a movie that feels too late in the game. Yeah. And then it's introducing all these concepts that, in all honesty, once I saw Pip the Troll at the end, I want to fucking eat a bullet, man. It sucked. Visually and conceptually. It's just... Uh, it's just too much, and it's kind of fucking stupid. You know what I'm saying? I know some people bitched about... The similar ancient astronaut concepts in Prometheus. Because I think it's like cool to frown on that concept because stupid people believe it. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? But I think it's a cool story concept. This is the one that deserves frowns, guys. This this fucking shit sucked. Gaka. I'm talking there's dry turds everywhere because this sucker sucked it all out, guy. Oh my god, it's terrible, man. Uh, I'm not saying there's worse movies, don't get me wrong. But this one's long, yeah, arduous, very repetitive. I will say that it's mad bland. Like yes. honestly, honestly, I don't think I hate it. Like hate it, hate it. Yeah, I'm yeah. just kind of like that was a movie we saw. Like I like certain things about it. Like I think some of the visuals are kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like the way they show some of the powers, like especially the speed character, who I don't even know her name because it doesn't matter. Yep, ditto. Uh, I kind of like some of the characters here and there, but it's just kind of as a whole. You're like, I can never, never see that again and be okay with it. Yeah, that, and that's throughout the whole movie for a lot of stuff. Mm. The, there's stuff that should, like I said earlier, it should be cool, but it's just not handled well. I think maybe know? that's what I'm kind of like. It, stuff should be cool. It just kind of isn't. Yeah. And I was trying to hold on to anything that was, should be cool. You know what I think the major problem with this is? And... and it's going to sound uh, controversial at first to anybody that liked the director's previous work. Chloe Zhao made Nomadland, which is an excellent movie. But she's very much not a director based on that that's, you know, going to be making superhero movies. Yeah. So I think, really, if we were going to get a good movie out of this, they should have let her indulge in what she does. This would have been a very interesting character drama. If it were about these gods and the, you know, or, or gods, quote unquote, infighting among themselves and how humanity has changed them, their perceptions of things, really, those concepts are in the movie, but they're so thin. Mm-hmm. They're so thin. They should have let her indulge like in that I, and made it a complete drama. I think that is kind of stuff I like. Like I like the druid character because mm-hmm. he's kind of interesting and his kind of like little struggle he's, with humanity. He's usually the most complex one. Yeah, but. 
his stuff comes comes and goes, and then there's like there's moments that just have action, mm-hmm. and they even make a joke about it in the movie. But you're like, no, that's exactly how it feels like. Like we just need action here, yeah, for no reason. Really, they should have gone one way or the other. Yeah, and I honestly think this movie, for the concepts it was trying to get across, uh, the ideas of, of the relation between God and man, and even here, gods amongst gods, and, and these complex things, these complex things that we're trying to come across they should have gone a hundred percent drama with you know spots of action uh or alternatively just make this a big visual thing of epic Mm. proportions one of those two uh what they try to do is both and they achieve none none nothing happens even though things are happening you're like boring yeah i agree you know i thought it was just me no Uh, it's boring there's, there's stuff like I said, stuff, stuff I enjoyed, mostly visual stuff. Now, well, let's talk about stuff you enjoyed. Go. Like, I like, like I said, I like the Druid character. I like Gilgamesh. He was kind of cool. Uh, but it's mostly just that. Like, I kind of like little things. Like, those two characters I liked. I liked the way they showed some of the powers. Like, the, the speed character. That was cool. One of the fights was alright in the beginning. Uh, uh, yeah. And I kind of liked, you know, some of the visual stuff. Like, at the end, when the hand's coming out. That looked cool. Yeah, I but think... it, but it's mostly just like I said, superficial. Its strengths are superficial, much like everything else. Yeah, I too liked some of the characters. Uh, you know, I think like Gilgamesh and Ajax. Spoiler: If you haven't seen this, I mean, everybody has probably that wanted to see it by now. But uh, you know, they die. Super. Dead. So that's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Druig is the most interesting one. But uh, you know, like Druig is interesting because he he presents. Kind of like a, a, a ethical quandary with the way he interacts mm-hmm. with humanity. You know, he can control people and just make them do things. And to a degree, he's doing that. And yet, he still wants to help humanity. So there's conflict by the way he does things. That's interesting. Yeah. But they don't delve far enough into it. Yeah. I, I, and just the sheer nature of his of that of the ethics of what he can do is what makes him very interesting yeah it's mostly, really he's it's, as thin as all the other characters it's just the idea and the way he's portrayed i think the mm-hmm. guy who played him was surprisingly good in the way he played him yeah even though he's in it for such little time and and, that, and perhaps that's the issue they try to give everybody something so nobody really gets enough attention yeah this is a good example of you can have a multi. There's a fucking sequel you're never gonna make. You could focus on other people in that one. You know, you could have really focused more on certain things. Although I fear that they would have focused more on Cersei. Yeah. And uh, what's his fucking name? Uh, Icarus. Icarus. And uh, that was just a, a bland. Story. Dude, yeah, I'm not even you gonna know? lie. I was gonna say it, but I didn't want to come off as sexist. I kind of dislike that chick. Not the actress, mind you. It's just the character is super uninteresting. Super uninteresting. And then they put most of the movie on her and Icarus. Which yeah. are like the two most uninteresting people in this movie. You're like, why do they get some... I mean, I understand why, but they stink. Yeah, she was very... If we're talking about everybody being thin character, this she was just like a blank receptor to mm. things. With vague emotions about what she was learning. And, uh, you know... Uh, I guess that's how we learned it. You know, there could have been other ways to do that. Again, if they would have focused more on other characters, it could have been a collective impact, which, again, the movie tries to communicate, but it just never comes off that way, especially because they're joking in the midst of all it. So let me tell you this. Some people said this movie's too serious. I think this movie should have been more serious because it's they, they just deflate anything, by the way, which is barely building up any steam. Yeah. They deflated everything with this lame humor. With some read ass humor. And it's not good. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with humor, but there's wrong something especially wrong with humor when you're barely trying to do something and it's barely working and then here comes a lame joke and you're like, "Well, there goes that." You know, uh pick a lane. In this one you had to pick a lane. They picked all and they all suck. I agree. Hip the troll sucks, guys. This got to be tro- one of the worst post mid credit sequence ever. Well, I gotta say, also one of the worst post credit sequence ever. Yeah, the Black Knight uh, reveal, I guess, at the end with Kit Harrington's character. I mean, it means nothing to anybody yes. that doesn't know the comics. And then that voice that tells them, you know, are you sure you want to pick up that blade? Basically, you know, uh, I guess it's supposed to be blade, and it just makes you go, why is blade? You know. 
I mean, I haven't read Marvel Comics in a while. Maybe there's some sort of link there, but like, who gives a shit? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, it's really. fabric. If, if you're excited for that, it's fabricated because yeah. that fucking sucked. And the Pip the Troll shit just fucking blew my nards, guy. <laughs> Worst effect I've seen in the Marvel Universe. And they, I really, and the effects in this movie were kind of all over the place, you know? Yeah, some were really good. Some were kind of like, what is that? Their suits were like terrible looking. Had a very like TV effect look sometimes mm-hmm. for things. Yeah, oh, which brings me to this. I know I was trying to get on a positive route, but it's kind of hard when this movie has so many negatives. Um, they should have done a lot more flashbacks because that stuff could have been interesting, again, to foment the relationship between these people, to really understand where they are in their interactions with humans. This movie, this one movie, everything that's covered in this movie should have really been spread over two movies. And the first movie should have just been between these people and the deviants being the villains. And the second movie would have been they've resolved yeah, their issues. And cause... maybe there's one that hasn't. And, and the conflict with the uh, Celestials. It should have been two different movies. You should, you, so you could explore these characters in depth. And, and actually get to know them. But it's one movie that's super long. And they don't explore anything adequately. The Deviants so, are just there, I guess. Yeah, the Deviants are pretty much useless. You know? Whatever. Who yeah. cares? Look terrible, too. Look terrible. Uh, that's another thing. And this is, uh, I guess, uh, this... Uh, look. Jack Kirby is the guy that created the Eternals. And he's, of course, one of the most famous artists of all times. One of the fathers of Marvel Comics. And it's arguable how well his art would translate to modern, uh, you know, comic book movies. Thor Ragnarok played with it, you know, but even they didn't indulge fully. However, I think the Celestial should have looked... Like he designed them. They just look like Pacific Rim characters that are floating in the fucking mm, sky. They, they kinda, all look the same, they kinda, too. Yeah, they kind of look like shit. And the Deviants are supposed to be a horde of monsters. Yes, if you look at them carefully, or not even carefully, if you just look at them for a while, you know, they're each a variant of, of creature, but they have the same uniform skin tone mm. and, and, and like this fibrous... Uh, you know, physiognomy that, that, that just makes them all look Twizzlers. like... Twizzlers. They're Twizzlers, guy. Yeah. It makes them all look the same. And then again, they end up contributing very little to the plot because the plot just becomes people going from place to place. And standing. And standing and talking. <laughs> knowing damn well they have seven days. Yes. How did they not figure out that this was a ruse? Even if it wasn't a ruse, why are you wasting that much time? A fucking literal celestial is going to be born... Granted, only uh, you know you're figuring that out too. But holy shit, you're wasting time. Yeah. You know you got seven days. Is they what I'm also saying. another thing they kind of fail to to bring across is the fact that some of them are kind of conflicted with whether they should let the celestial be born because it'll cause it'll bring forth more life. You know, and they kind of play with it here and there. But I feel like that could have been another yeah. thing that could have been that goes back because to what I... ultimately you're like, yeah, they're right. Yeah, again, that goes back to the, the, that idea that I said, you know, that, that, that there's so much that could have explored these mm. characters, their conflicts, their relationship between God and man, God and God, God and human, or demigod and human, whatever, you know, as you want to port these. You, and, and with that, you could have explored how these characters are parallels to the cultures and religions of the world. Again, you just kind of see that here and there. But imagine how much more interesting it would have been to actually see these people in the place of ancient world gods directly affecting things. Oh, and by the way, God forbid you should make the ancient world actually feel historical mm. looking. It just looks lame. You know, uh, so many missed opportunities, man. It feels like a less cool version of the, you know, the credit sequence to Wolverine Origins where you're like, damn, this movie's going to be awesome. And then, nope, it's not as awesome as that. That's for damn sure. Oh, look at Deadpool. He sucks. It feels like that, only with you, those moments are just like, oh, that was it? I guess we're back to waiting around the table and talking. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. I don't know, man. They just didn't let somebody do something completely. I feel that's it, gang. I mean, I'll give them credit for it not really looking like other Marvel movies. True. I'll give them credit for, again, a score that actually feels different. Um. Uh, uh, that's about, you know, it, really. about it yeah i did like like some characters like yeah. I, I thought fina was pretty cool i thought the idea of a 
somebody losing yeah, their mind had, uh, with that much power. She had Mad Eye Moody a disease, I think. Yeah, Mad Eye Moody. I think that's what they called it. <laughs> I don't it even know. It sounded just about as cool as it did in the movie. <laughs> Some stuff that they brought oh, from the comics is stupid sounding like that. Yeah. What she has and the Mega Mind or whatever. You're like, come on, guy, Mega Mind. I know it's not Mega Mind. I'm just <laughs> throwing yeah. my own fucking. Might as well, man. Yeah. I feel like that's what they did with the script. Like, eh, let's just throw. That, that works, right? Yeah, okay. Next mm-hmm. is what they were doing, you know? Basically. Um, Yeah, the movie's a, a big dud. Now, don't get me wrong. I hate Iron Man 3 more. Oh, yeah. But. I think I would rather see Iron Man 3. I would rather see yeah, Iron Man 3. It's at least more entertaining. Yeah. You know, it's so fucking stupid. Somebody fire breathes in it. I can at least get angry at that. This, I was just like, oh my God. I can't believe they made this super uninteresting. Yeah, dude. You know, so... uh, We had like zero reactions during this movie. Other than occasionally being like, yep, that's what they're saying. Uh, So that was a thing. I mean, usually we don't react, but to be fair, this one felt more like there's nothing to react to. Yeah, dude. This was a devoid of life, this movie. Uh, and, And, you know, a lot of the conflicts that do happen... I did like the team battle. It was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, again, it would have been cooler if you got to know these characters more and uh, known the extent of their powers. Or maybe there was a conflict with using their powers in some uh, respect to how it might affect the Earth or humanity or whatever. Nope. It's just kind of like, oh, I guess we got that battle that kind of looked cool. Let's go back to talking around the table and uh, do that, you know, rinse, repeat. Yeah, it almost feels like Carlitos. <laughs> that joke you'll only you'll get. Oh, yeah. I'm not even going to elaborate on that joke because nope. cause that's... We don't want to lead nobody to no, Carlitos. No, he's bad. Anyway, uh, this movie fucking sucks. It's easily... Uh, it's easily in the bottom of the MCU. I can't even put it in a category with other MCU movies because it, it blows that hard, guy. You know what I'm saying? It's just got to be in its own subcategory. It's a movie that I feel many people want to forget. And uh, I feel that if there was a critic that said this was cool... He was lying, or she was lying, <laughs> yeah. whatever it may be. They were lying, whatever. I feel that that I do applaud that there's a multicultural cast. I think that was very fitting of these beings that are supposed to be amidst the the people of the world. Uh, it's a damn shame it was wasted mm. on a fucking turd the movie. Feet film, man. Yeah, man, stinker. Mm-hmm. So let's give it a rating on a scale of one to ten again, relative to this type of flick. I'm gonna go with a solid motherfucking. Two on this one, guy. I think I'll go a three, maybe a four, but most nah. You know what? I'll go a three, cause it it cause it 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 commits the biggest crime of all, and that's be mad bland. Uh, you know, there's some cool things here and there, but it's mostly just boring. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that uh, destroyed our soul. So uh, we only have one more left to go. To catch up in that Spider-Man. Uh, Fizzed. What the fuck is it called? The Far From Home? Or something like that. Uh, some bullshit. Something about Space home. Time? or Space Time Continuum? Yeah. Bendy, Bendy, Break, Break? I think Whatever that's what the fuck called, that other right? Spider-Man is called. Excuse me. So technically we could have avoided this motherfucker right here. Because it's not in the core MCU universe. No. But while we were at it, we are like, you know what? Venom, let there be carnage is out. It is tangentially connected. Might as well watch the stupid piece of shit, right? Yeah. Nah, you might be thinking, guys, guys, you're going in a little harsh. I'm going in a little ham, if you will, apropos, uh, on this fucking Venom. Seems like you just want to hate out the gate. Look, I'm open to everything, but Venom 1 was straight fucking culos. And Sony is not exactly renowned for churning out classics. Nah, homie. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there was a, a few reservations, but still open to... Hey, it may happen, guy, right? Sandy this may be Circus? the one. Andy Circus directing, gotta support the Cirque. I think that's the hashtag. Yeah. Oh, but he's fucking <laughs> retagging no. that one. Uh, so, but yeah, we went in and said, fuck it. You know, let's see what happens. And let me tell you what happened. We got visually raped and it hurt my butt. Okay, this movie is butt sex and not the good kind, guy. No, nah, It's the kind I don't like to watch. No but offense if you like to watch it. You don't like to watch you it, know. but you're still in the corner masturbating and crying. Admittedly so, yeah, but that's so beside the point. The point is I'm not enjoying the masturbation yeah. process. Uh, yeah, man, this fucking movie, I mean, god damn. Can I even call it a movie, guy? No. It's terrible. <laughs> Look, and the major mistake it makes is to try to be funny. Yeah, And you might dude. be thinking, 
Isn't that the story of your channel? We should know them. We're the fucking experts. Yeah. This motherfucking movie is corny, guys. It's not even corny. It's corny, which itself is a corny way to say corny. Yeah, it's super corny. It's like layers of corn. It's so bad, dude. Can I at least start with a positive? All right. I think that the biggest positive for this movie is that it's impressively bad. Yes. Whereas the first one was just bland as hell to the point of almost mm-hmm. being boring. Like it never started. Whereas this one, it starts, baby, and it sucks balls all the way through. <laughs> and every single... There was literally moments during this movie, lines, I should say, during this movie, where we screamed yes. at the screen. In, in shock, no yes. less. There was moments that I was so irritated with Venom that I just had to go... Jesus. Yep. And that's weird because we're usually really quiet during a movie, but we were literally time. screaming in pain. Yeah, it was cringe screams. Yes. There's so much cringy humor in this. And don't get me wrong, the character of Venom lends itself to, you know, I mean, it's a pretty silly concept if you really get down to the brass tacks of him. So there, it lends itself to humor. It can be done. And superheroes and humor can be done, is what I'm getting at. Yeah. This motherfucker's not funny, guy. This sucks my <laughs> asshole dry. He's horribly annoying. Yes. You know, uh, in the first one, I guess I put up with him, again, mostly because I was on the border of being bored. In this one, he sucked. Look, I'll say that you're right. I agree with you. The movie is not dull. We... Uh, Definitely weren't bored. I don't say we enjoyed it. No. We didn't enjoy it in a so bad it's good way, but it was close because it was shockingly bad. No, I, I can't I can't I can't abide people that say that these are so corny they're fun. No no no. They're no. not corny. I'm not they're saying not that. Fu- no no no, I know that's what I'm saying. That's what yeah. I was trying to get to. They're not so corny they're fun. They're just shit. Yeah. But this one almost reached a point where it was fascinatingly bad. Yes. It's like not wh- fun bad fascinatingly bad yeah it's like watching a car crash but it was like a clown car that crashed yeah like so Clownvis was of, in it yeah, yeah definitely if Clownvis was in it we're laughing if Clownvis is in it we're not saving him not at all guy we wouldn't even admit to recognizing Clownvis <laughs> you know what I'm saying yeah. it's that kind of movie yeah it's not so bad it's good like an Andy Sedaris flick it's more like boy howdy does that blow my nards dry and that element makes me laugh. Yeah. In agony, no less. Yes. It's yes. a mixed bag. But anyway, um, I guess if I had something positive to say about this movie is that I actually like the design of Carnage. I think it looked pretty cool. Yeah. You know when it wasn't cool, though? When he literally turned into a fucking tornado for some goddamned reason. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned that. Not the tornado, because what the hell is that shit all about? Yes. But the the, the actual design of him, mm-hmm. his effects are like considerably considerably better than every other effect in the movie. Dude, especially the helicopters. The helicopters look fake as the hell. The helicopters were straight out of freaking N64. Dude. Like I was high, expecting to see again. freaking Glover walking around in there. Not Danny. Uh... Or Danny DeVito. The <laughs> only Danny I accept is DeVito, okay? <laughs> I don't know why I had a Glover reference. Anyway, shitty N64 games aside, his effects were actually really good, weirdly. Mm-hmm. But, which makes it stand out even more because Venom looks like shit at times. He looks okay, mostly, but there's like other stuff that just looks terrible in the movie. But yeah. he looks really good, weirdly. I think so, it's not so much. Well, there's. Don't get me wrong. There are stuff. There are yeah, things the, that the look terrible, like the fucking helicopters. Yeah. They suck my ass. Super dry, guy. It's chapped down there, guy. Yeah, it's not good. Anyway, the car mix in my ass aside. Yeah, yeah. There are really bad effects, but I'd say the rest of the effects are fine. Are fine. They're yeah. passable for a movie that is not of. Like, let's say the MCU's caliber, which let, let's there's been some bad effects in that, too. But it's not up to that level. But Carnage is above the level yeah, of those. Like, wait, it <laughs> yeah. makes all the other effects look kind of bad, even yeah. though they're not necessarily awful. Except for those N64. Yeah, <laughs> those, those choppers, guy. I can't forgive them. Anyway, uh, also can't forgive my choppers because <laughs> they're missing a yeah, lot of them. But I'm anyway, uh, look, man. Uh, somewhere in this, as I was watching this fucking movie, I was thinking somewhere in this... There's the structure of, of something okay, decent at, at the very least. It's just the way they did it completely. Yeah. The writing, the, writing the is, direction, everything. The uh, writing is some of the worst, cringiest writing I've seen in such a very long time. And uh, I should have expected it because this comes from the writer of Fifty Shades of Grey. 
That uh, makes <laughs> so much sense. So, uh, yeah, uh, just the lines they give Woody Harrelson to say. There's literally moments, like I said, that we screamed in agony. The just Johnny Cash him. reference. The Johnny Cash warning tasting like ham. What the <laughs> shit was that? They actually, there's some 80 yard lines that are terrible. So mm-hmm. it must have, they must have brought him in to record those lines to put yep. them in. And those 80 yard lines that we noticed were always like little zingers. Yes. And we're like, oh my God, they added that thinking it was going to be funny or cool. It was not either. I uh, also got to imagine that they hired Woody Harrelson for the express purpose that he played a maniacal psycho at one point in his life, most famously in Natural Born Fucking Killers, a minted classic. And I got to say, if you're looking for more of that, you ain't going to get it. You are gonna him, you're going to get him chewing scenery, I guess. And even then, very half-heartedly. Yeah. Now, as a comic book fan, uh, I can say that, you know, again, had the writing been better... Some of the changes they made to adapt this thing are actually kind of cool. Like, you know, having Shriek know uh, 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 fucking uh, Car- or Cletus Cassidy Carnage himself f- since they were young. That's a cool change because then otherwise it would just be let's introduce this character out of nowhere. That's, you know, so that's cool. You know, you see little, little things, you know, uh, uh, the cop that eventually becomes toxic. You see, you see these things as a comic fan that you could see actually working in a competent script. It's just they didn't make them work. No, me. You know, it's just so much ham in this fucking turd that that that, that uh, whatever attempts you can't even give them praise for the attempts because they fall apart. You know, uh, they never explain in the movie. You know, the logic of the transference of the symbiote to to uh, uh, yeah to Cletus Cassidy from Venom to Cletus Cassidy. They don't explain it other than he got bit. And then the the next time he sees Carnage, he's afraid of him because quote he's the he's red, and they don't explain that for the audience. You know, they don't explain why he should fear him. They don't explain why he is not aware of the symbiotes, you know, offspring passing to someone. They yeah, just, Venom's like a moron in this. Yeah, and now in the comics, Venom. There's a reason Venom doesn't tell Eddie Brock about, you know, they don't try to explain any of that. So you're just left with a bunch of lingering questions that really you feel like you shouldn't even want to answer because the movie's so lazy that you're like, no, I don't know. I don't want to. And yet it's making me angrily ask them. Sucks. Now, anything you did like in terms of the uh, performances? No. <laughs> like, I'm a freaking Woody fan. Mm-hmm. And I'm a Woodite. I can't even say he was good in this. He sucked. Yeah. Balls. Very low effort. He, yeah. I'll say that he was the least annoying. Mm-hmm. Because Tom Hardy, I wanted to punch him. I wanted to kill Tom Hardy in this movie. Yeah. You know I'm a Tom Hardy fan, but I wanted to break his neck, dude. He is so annoying in this. Not only as freaking Eddie Brock, which, what the hell is that accent? It got it's worse, worse, too. worse, <laughs> yes. But he is unbearable as freaking Venom. Yeah. There's a scene where he's cooking for Eddie Brock, and Ugh. I wanted to kill myself. Man. I wanted to mur- I wanted to end the world, guy. Look, I get that they were going for, like, you know, a playful dynamic of these yeah. two are like a married couple that has, uh, it's you know, just, it's issues. Just, it's just annoying. But it's it, irritating. Oh, man, yeah. They went so hard with it, with the attempted humor of it, that it came off, first of all, dated as hell. Yes. And then when you ratchet that datedness to fucking like, it's like watching I Love Lucy if everybody was on speed. It's mm-hmm. like, I don't like that. What is that? Yeah, it's horrible. You know? Uh, so, yeah, that sucks. You know, you don't like, I, I didn't like Tom. And at least in the first one, Tom Hardy fascinated me. Yeah. With least, how, like, what is that? Weird he was acting. Here and you just, just want to kill him. Yeah, he just. Like, I wanted to erase him from, from the world, guy. Okay? Yeah, it was bad. I mean, uh, I can't. Uh, a shriek was fine. I guess. Uh, I guess. Donnie Whatever. Wahlberg's retarded cousin was there. I guess. <laughs> yeah, that cop is Wani Dahlberg. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, man. Uh, no real performances stick out. Uh, you know, and uh, I still can't believe Michelle Williams is in these things. It's pretty to look at, I guess. That's it. Yeah. Uh, I will say that the in terms of the shit humor i guess the the humor involving the dynamic between brock 
uh, you know, his ex and, and, and her current husband was possibly the, the, the one that worked the best, even though it itself is so cliche. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't, I mean, it was like a breath of fresh air compared to the other turd humor. And it sucked. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's that. There's uh, a scene where Venom goes to like a rave. Oh, my God. The gay rave. They they gave, they queer baited with the movie, guy. The gay rave. Um, it was kind of like we were half expecting him. To start because he grabs a microphone and, and we were half expecting him to start rapping the Venom rap. Yep. Venom gonna lick my splenum. But, <laughs> That's how it goes, right? But <laughs> unfortunately, he's it does it somehow ends up being worse. And we were that was one of the moments where we we're screaming at the yeah. TV. Why is this happening? He literally drops the mic at the end, guy. He drop. Oh my God! You could see like Avi Arad masturbating to this movie. Yep, it's bad. They, 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 you know, when he's at that rave, at first you're like, is this like a gay rave? Maybe not. Maybe it even wasn't. There was a lot of gay people there. there was a lot of gay Definitely people. Definitely a lot of like, yeah. you know, a fringe of society in terms of weirdos, you know, basically. Yeah, weirdos, yeah. you know, in the good way, my yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, but uh, what people would call weirdos, let's yeah. Say that. And I turn to you and I go, I think the movie's kind of gonna queer bait, isn't it? And then like a gay dude hits on him, and he's yeah, like, and then the gay dude hits on them, and then he goes on stage, and instead of rapping, which I felt was what was originally on the script gonna oh, happen by the way he mentions that he he's out of the closet of eddie yeah that, and that's really what his speech on stage yes. is about you know which of course all the people uh you know that that in the in the in the crowd identify with and they cheer him on as a yeah. hero and you're like oh no, man this be, is horrid uh, i just want to say before anybody freaking says anything we don't got anything about gays he's Wrong. gay you, <laughs> i love dicks we have nothing against gays it wasn't about freaking this is a gay thing it was just that it was so it was bad cringy yes it was terrible it was bad you know uh sometimes like an artist like a pop artist especially will all of a sudden release something that's like super gay and then some people in the gay community like you will be like that's offensive guy right? because yeah. where was this before where yeah. were you backing us up when it wasn't popular you know and i'm like you're right, Goon Tick. Yeah. The gay, as they call you in uh, Middle Earth. <laughs> but yeah, yeah that you know, staff goes is really stinky. Let's just say that. That's what this movie does. It's uh, in my butt. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big staff to uh, infection that is yeah. from the butt sex. But anyway, uh, really violent. But uh, anyway, a fucking uh, yeah. That's what this movie feels like. Like you just put that in there yeah, for what? It, it had no purpose in the movie. <laughs> it, sucks. it was it was impressively bad. I'm not even mad that it's in it. I was kind of fascinated that it was that in it, it was in it. Yeah. I was like, gee, what is the point of that? Yeah, it's certainly not funny. That's for damn sure. No. Some of the effects. Uh, I know we mentioned that. You know, again, they're bad. But uh, there's some effects that are fascinatingly bad. Like when he takes over. Uh, uh, what's her face? The the, the oh, dude, Asian I had, supermarket lady. I forgot. I had forgot. It misses something. Chan something like Chan that. Chan or Cho or something. Whatever. Anyway, oh, I feel like my whatever is quasi offensive. But anyway, the point is, fucking, uh, you know, her eyes turn into venom eyes, and they're Asian looking. Yeah. Like they're small and they have. I yeah. mean, already the venom eyes are kind of slanty. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, but they're yeah. Uh, they Asianized the venomized, which is not good. It it doesn't look good. It doesn't period. look good. It looks terrible. And then you're like that entire Come on, scene. Guy. That entire scene is humorous, and Quote we unquote. were just like, "That's a freaking thing that just happened." There was yeah. that's another thing. There was several scenes where, like I said, we screamed. There was other scenes where the scene would end, and we we're like, "That what that just happened?" Yep, that happened, guy. So many scenes like that. Um, yeah, and really, like, just a lot of stuff falls apart under the slightest scrutiny. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, the cop. Uh, I always forget his fucking name. Well, anyway. Uh, well, yeah, let's call him his real name. Wani Dahlberg. Wani Dahlberg, uh, you know, we get a little backstory to him at the beginning where, you know, he was transporting a, 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 a shriek in her early days. And, uh, you know, by the way, I guess they acknowledge that mutants exist in this universe yeah, because yeah. she's a mutant. But anyway, and she says so. Uh, but anyway, a fucking, uh, he's convinced that she's dead all these years. And yet, you know, per the movie, that she's been taken away. So he must have woke up at some point and gone, where's the fucking body? Mm. What? Or I guess didn't and just accepted it. Just weird little things like that, you know. And of course, uh, 
the post credit sequence that tied it into the MCU, however uselessly that turned out to be. You literally spent um, all night trying to logic it into existence. And yeah, I mean, I'm sure if the MCU cares about how it's going to play off on their side, they'll explain it. And I have a theory that may or may not be the case. But the fact that I have to come up with a theory to explain it, maybe I'm just dumb and I missed something. I don't know. But how the fuck does Venom uh, get pulled into the MCU if he doesn't know who Peter Parker is? Yeah. It's acknowledged that he doesn't know. And later, which we'll talk about in the Spider-Man part of this, uh, No Way Home, uh, you know, we know that only the people that knew a Peter Parker identity in whatever universe existed got pulled in. He clearly doesn't know. Yeah. Now, the symbiote does say that he's seen other universes or other existences or whatever the fuck. So maybe he knows and just didn't tell Eddie. I don't know. They don't say that. Maybe that's the reason. I don't know. But as it stands, it, it just, no sense, yeah. just sucks. You're like, what? first of all, you're like, this scene is pointless, and it's and it's re- made really pointless. Yeah. In Spider-Man No Way Home, uh, other than to leave behind something which we'll talk about, which made us go, did they just, you know? But anyway, we'll talk about that. Uh, fucking, um, uh, this is a movie, guy. It sucks. This is a fucking movie that exists. Or uh, f- I didn't to the gills of corn. I didn't believe our boy Logan when he said it was worse than the first. <clears throat> I th- he told me it was better than the first. So I don't uh, know what the fuck. He told me it was worse, dude. But uh, uh, either way, it sucks balls. It's I I agree that it is a worse movie. But like I told him, I was more entertained by this one. It's easier to watch. It's easier sure. to watch, yeah. But it's bad. But it's bad. It's not inter- It's not entertaining. But it was yeah. easier to watch. Yeah. Um. I don't know what to say, man. This movie. I mean, I guess it goes by quick. So yeah. That's a thing. Uh. There's some mind-bogglingly stupid shit. I.e. Carnage Tornado. Um, yeah, that's how that, that's all we could really say. Uh, they fight. Uh, the fights, I guess, cooler than the other fight, <laughs> less I transformery. Guess, yeah. I, I, I'm trying to give it something, but really, overall, it blows. Let's get a final thoughts and a final score on a scale one to ten. Go. It's a third monger film. Uh, I wouldn't. I don't want to see this again. I was gonna say I might because it was amusing at times Mm -hmm. but no it's just shit it's irredeemably bad Uh, i don't understand people who say these are bad but they're fun they're not fun they suck i mean whatever you can like whatever you like but they just stink um i can't live in a world where where this gets a higher rating than than bvs uh yeah what is (laughs) so and it has like a 56 percent woof this one so i'm gonna give it a freaking the rating it deserves i'm gonna get a one just because I kind of like that carnage design is pretty cool. So that's where the one goes. Yeah, I get, I mean, I could see some sector of the audience, obviously, have made tons of money nah. enjoying this. And, and for, you know, uh, there's people that enjoy Fast and Furious movies, you know. There's nothing wrong with that. Some people are just okay with a certain type of entertainment. I'm not trying to shit on that. Uh, but like you, I have to say that for us, this fucking movie is the pits. And... I am always open to, both of us are really, to reevaluating something. And like you, I'm like, uh, there's no need to. Yeah. This one is so abrasively, only, aggressively it bad. It only get worse. Yeah, that uh, there's really no need to, uh, you know, at all, man. Uh, so, whatever. I mean, it's vapid. Cool, so I'll give it a fucking... I think we give the last one like a three, and really, I think we're being too nice. Yeah. So I'm gonna lower my score for that one to a two, and then this one I'm gonna give the three. And again, uh, I'm being too nice, really, because uh, it sucks donkey dicks. Mm. It deserves less, but I'll give it its credit for the things that I did say. A uh, carnage looks cool. You could see the foundations of of, of a structure there, uh, but but even though it's written badly, uh, and, and yeah, you know. I guess, I guess you could say kind of they tried a little harder than the first one, but it still sucks. But anyway, whatever. Venom sucks. The end. Let's go to the next one. Uh, Spider-Man. No way from home. Fizzed. 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 We were all looking forward to Danny DeVito making his long yeah. delayed cameo, but uh, that didn't happen, yeah. unfortunately. So uh, uh, zero out of ten. Zero. Yeah. Uh, look, man. Uh, pretty open about your aggression towards spider-man you are <laughs> yeah i don't think i've liked any of the previous ones 
Yeah, in terms of the MCU you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you didn't like... Uh, you were like whatever with Homecoming, yeah, really. which I really yeah, liked. Yeah, really, I should say I didn't hate. I should, I'm should. i kind of whatever about it. I like Tom Holland. Yeah, Tom Holland's a great Spidey. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's a no-brainer right there. But uh, yeah, I, on the other hand, really liked Homecoming. Uh, I like the changes and all that stuff. Uh, and a lot of that had to do with uh, Tom Holland. just fucking great, you know. Uh, but we both thoroughly disliked mm-hmm. No Way Home, you know. Uh, it was just, oh man, the humor was so crushingly bad <laughs> yeah. and, uh, it just didn't feel Spider-Man-y, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, though Mysterio turned out to be a surprisingly decent villain, I'm going to be honest with you. I've completely forgotten Homecoming. Yeah. I just don't, my mind was like, I don't care to remember it. Now I will revisit eventually and hopefully that'll change, but, uh, you know, really, all that I had in mind was, I remember the end. <laughs> and, you know, appropriately enough, No Way Home starts right after that moment at the end. And, uh, look, man. Right as it started, I was like, God damn it, we're in No Way Home. I mean, we're in uh, Far From Home territory. This is going to blow. And it didn't take but a minute for me to go, hold on. And then, and I don't know if this was your experience. This movie got progressively better and better and and better and by the end or really long before the end but by the end for damn sure i was like damn i really fucking love this movie so for me it was a very redeeming experience and on top of that a really enjoyable entertaining fun and uh you know honestly it tapped a lot of nostalgia not only in terms of comics uh in its own distinct way because really the mcu spidey has a lot of differences from the comics uh you know in a lot of ways but uh in terms of the movies, which culturally, I think, you know, that's how Spider-Man has largely been known for the last two decades. In terms of the movies that it taps into. The Sony movies uh, in their in both iterations. So, by the end, I was really bowled over by this movie. I had a lot of fun watching it. It's not a perfect movie. It still has a few moments where I was like, okay. But I really loved it. So, where are you at? As a Spider-hater... I was expect no actually I wasn't expecting to hate it. I was like I'll probably like it because it's got Willem Dafoe. And you how know can, I'm a Dafoe How can you hate Dafoe, guy? Especially uh, when he does the dance of the Sphinx. Damn, homie. Uh, I gotta say I actually really liked this movie too. I was I was kind of surprised how much I enjoyed it, given how much I didn't like the other two. But I was like, yeah, this is a pretty great movie. Not gonna I, lie. I think you'll agree with me on this. But the greatest thing about this movie is that this is literally. Uh, this Spider-Man's Uncle Ben moment. Mm-hmm. And it's a whole movie that's the Uncle Ben moment. It's leading up to it, and then the aftermath of it. Yeah. And even greater, that Uncle Ben moment culminates in this movie with them setting up a Spider-Man that's closer to the yes. Spider-Man that we I, all I think, grew up with. I think, I think that that's what I liked about the movie, is that, to me... The other two didn't feel like Spider-Man. They just felt like something in the MCU. You know, they mm-hmm. took away what made Spider-Man special. Yeah. He was just a Tony Stark guy. I was like, I guess. Um, whereas this one, if he feels like Spider-Man. Yes. And, yes. and yeah, like you said, at the end, you get a, a moment where you're like, oh, cool. They're actually setting up something. Hopefully, Sony doesn't mess it up. This is why I say that, may, or I'm for sure going to revisit uh, uh, this, the second one. But maybe upon uh, reappraisal, it'll... Uh, be better than I than my first experience knowing where this is all leading to what it's all feeding to and uh, of course these movies are planned years and years ahead so there was structure there uh, but that what it culminates in is so fucking rewarding that it, it literally like I was already like this movie won me over long before the end but that end I was like fuck yes I wanted to masturbate it right in front of you guys. Damn, homie. I was that happy about it, That's dude. Gross. It was it was fantastic. And I gotta say that I know you're a mad hater of Ned. I'm not. Yeah, although he's... again, pretty much everybody irritated me in part two. He's visually uh, disgusting. But <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, he's stealing our gimmick, being visually yeah, disgusting. True. But uh, no, uh, we have the decency to wear masks. He doesn't. His lips yeah. are all like. Shh. Well, it looks like he will. But uh, the oh, point God is, God damn it, that's true. The point is, uh, what I've really, one of the things that I've really liked is the relationship that they've made between him, uh, Ned and Peter and, and MJ. Uh, it's been 
uh, one of the bright spots, even in the dark moment that was part two. It's something that I really like, and I think it's the best here. It's the best. They feel much more rich and fulfilled, the characters do, in terms of their relationship with each other. And uh, uh, I don't know if that affected how you viewed Ned as a character. but nah, it still uh, sucked. Uh, I, I don't know. I really like the rapport that they have. I yeah. think they I play think he, very well off was, of each other. He was the least annoying in this, uh, and I actually wasn't really annoyed by him. It's just he's visually disgusting to me. You know how sometimes God, you, see, man. you see someone and you're like, I want to kill them? <laughs> I feel like I'm in the kill bur- them? I'm in a murderous streak in these two rooms. Damn, homie. Uh, he's just ugly to me. So uh, it was mostly just a visual disgust in this one, whereas in the other two, I was visually and horribly annoyed by him. He's actually kind of likable in this. I hate to say. Yeah, I mean... Uh... Just wonderful work on on, I feel how, like on the relationship. Back by my hate for him. I mean, yeah, I mean the guy's not a great uh, looker. I'll Definitely grant you that. Not. But uh, he's a likable guy, guy. Nah, homie. I think you're just jealous that he lost all the weight. I don't know. He looks worse now, dude. Nah, homie. I think I I'd, I'd suck him off. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> God damn. Uh, but anyway, uh, I think this movie. I mean, sh- holy shit, dude! Like it really fucking went out and, and did something, you know. And we didn't watch it when everybody watched it, no. so we spent all this time hearing everybody fucking talk, bloviate about it, uh, about how awesome it was. And, uh, you know, that's a lot of hype, even if you're not someone like me that, that I, I just don't, you know, usually get you know, all excited about something to the point where it ruins it. Uh, but uh, that is a lot of hype to have on your back to go, you you want to go in with your arms crossed, crossed almost, you know? Yeah. But, uh yeah, uh, dude, this thing immediately disarmed me, and I was like, "I, dude, I'm on board for this shit." You know, uh, great effects, great uh, uh, music, great everything that makes everything a, a movie a movie. Uh, but I think, of course, what everybody wanted to see was how this was gonna all weave into these universes coming together. And I gotta say, like I, I'm sure a lot of people did, there was some doubts. Mm. You know, especially with Strange being so, you know, I yeah. guess, flippant about the use of magic. Yeah, I thought the, the, the trailers, in my mind, it was like, this is going to be a mess. Right. Uh, but weirdly, it's not. It's Surprisingly actually, it's tidy, man. Pretty, ni- pretty neat, yeah. It feels exactly like a good comic that, would, would explain things away, you know? I'll say that and, and keep this in, in, in mind that it's, you know, for what these movies are mm-hmm. and for what the trailer suggested. It's actually kind of restrained at times. Yeah. Um. And that's the moments I like the most is when they're just kind of figuring shit out, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, the action's cool, too, but it really works in those moments. Yeah, yeah. The character stuff, you know, these characters. Like, yeah, everybody really interacting with each other. Mm-hmm. Green Goblin, you know, with his uh, kind of bipolarness, you know? Yeah. Uh, that's great. Now, I do wish there was a lot more Green Goblin I was gonna say. I was going to say, I have a complaint. I can't say it's a complaint, though. Mine is because it's Willem Dafoe, and well, Willem Dafoe needs to be in more. Look, he wasn't going to do the Dance of the Sphinx. One. That's a good point. But. Well, that's another complaint. It should have had the freaking Dance of the Sphinx. Just in the middle, his fucking dong, and his he's penis. doing his little dance. Yeah. If you haven't seen that, look it up. But anyway. Yeah, we can't put it in the video. <laughs> we super can't put it in the video. Uh, but uh, the point is, I would have killed for more Green Goblin. But that just tells you how good this movie is. That you want to see more of characters. And he's not the only one. I loved how they portrayed uh, Dr. Octopus. I love that they didn't just overly villainize the villains when they could have. True. When you know that's exactly what Sony would have done. Oh, yeah. Uh, they kept them true to, especially the Raimi ones, true to their roots where they're kind of complex. You know, they have sides to them. Uh, the redeeming qualities to them or what have you. I love that. And I love that they fixed some of the villains too that, that needed some yeah. fixing. And I also kind of love that Lizard was... Uh, kind of made fun of what is that uh, yeah. uh you know that was hilarious but anyway uh yeah i really really loved that uh, and of course green goblin you know he's fucking fantastic he's great i didn't want more but i'll say this uh putting in more would have really thrown off the pace and taken off the focus from what was really important and that's what you said it's that story at the middle of the, this, this this story that's being told about peter uh, uh, finding his selflessness as a hero, you know, his Ben Parker, mo- uh, you know, his Uncle Ben uh, moment, you know, and, uh, you know, you just knew it was going to happen uh, the moment, uh, for sure, the moment, you know, May says those infamous words, you're like, oh, well, she's fucking dead, and, and uh, kudos for doing it, and, you know, because now we don't have a hottie, Marissa Tomei, which everybody wants, mm-hmm. uh, but, 
It was such a worthwhile death. And that they did it so faithful to the spirit of what Uncle Ben's death means. And then they bring in these two other Spideys to just really amp up. Man, they worked up them emotions just the right way, guy. It was great. Emotional, nostalgia, pump to the max. I think they did such an exquisite job, you know, working in these cultural iconic uh, stories into what is now the current uh, iteration of it and using those things to even boost it even higher. Mm -hmm. Fucking fantastic. I loved it, guy. Loved it. That's yeah, it finally feels like Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. I feel like it finally fixed my problems with the movie, despite Ned still being in it. Um, who's hideous? Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. my only complaint like I said is that I kind of wish there was more, more Green Goblin because he does kind of take center stage as the main villain and for a while he kind of disappears mm -hmm. um, so maybe a little more of him would have been cool especially because there's a way to do it with you know the dueling personalities of him uh, but I kind of get why they didn't do it but again I want more Willem always especially his always. Ma massive penis yeah that's the reason really yeah. the only reason um, I will say I have one nitpick. Oh, shit. I don't know if you'll agree with me or not. And it's literally that. Uh, the, the way this movie is, you know, the fact that it's very comic booky, uh, and yet, like any good comic story, has this emotional core, saves this moment from being a quote unquote problem, which it really wouldn't have been because it's such a good movie, you know? You can forgive small problems in good movies, you know? Uh, but this is, again, nitpick, not an actual problem. I will say that the resolution of fixing the heroes doesn't really apply to some people. Like, how do you fix a mental state of being, uh, in this case, Green Goblin, with a, you know, a chemical injection? Yes, he was created by, you know, the chemicals fucking messing up his mind. But this literally become a mental state of being. And the resolution is, boom, we've injected this boy. And now he's good. Uh, you know, again... The comic book nature of this saves it. Some of them work exquisitely. We know that uh, Doc Ock, you know, he, his chip fucking fucked him up. So that makes sense. Rep, uh, reptile, uh, the lizard, you know, you know, it was a chemical thing that changes his uh, 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 physical being. You know, I, you could see that the, the electro thing that that worked, you know, uh, but the, the like inject the guy and he's not insane thing. That was kind of like just the thing I noticed, whatever. It's a nitpick. Uh, but think, again, it was so good yeah, that I didn't I give a shit. I think it's not a big deal because they established that he's still fighting, you know, the two Yeah, guys. but it's still like, I mean, you, and oh, then the you serum like inject bad. you and your depression's gone. So, on, yeah, I guess I guess if you're looking at it that way, but it does. But that's the thing I'm saying. If I were to nitpick, that would bother me. It did come up as I was watching. I was thinking like, hmm, that's weird. But the movie's so good, it doesn't matter. It's yeah. comic book logic. So... Uh, that happens all the time in comics, and it's yeah, still fun. It's, it's still like, super entertaining. It's kind of like crying about when people shoot Batman. In the, in Come the... on, guy! Now you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna kneecap Al and Ned Lee. Yeah, dude. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. You know, fucking uh, fantastic. Uh, any final thoughts? Uh, you got there, any little game? Uh, not really. I mean, there's not a lot to say other than it's actually really good, uh, and that's coming from a spider hater. So, yeah. You just seem like Spider-Man overall, okay? No, 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 I mean, I should say MCU like, spi spiders in general. Yeah, MCU Spider-Man, I really disliked other than Tom Holland. Come on, guy. You liked him when he first showed up on the scene. You're like, hell yeah, Spidey. Did I? I was actually yeah. like, why is he so freaking strong? He was insanely strong, I gotta say that. Uh, I also have a problem. I guess I'll mention this again. I always have to mention it mm. when we talk about Spider-Man. And it's not a humongous deal in this one, but it's still a thing. I don't like the CGI costume. I think it looks too fake. That's why that ending um, rocks even more, guys. Yeah, that was a good. That was a good at the end. But I will but, say his Iron Spider, you know, with a gold uh, yeah. emblem, like he was wearing a physical costume the majority of times. So yeah. How could you tell? But, because there was creases in the fucking gold that didn't well, uh, but, match the CGI. The thing is, they have they have the physical costumes, but they CGI over them, and sometimes not in this one. A lot some, of the time, sometimes they're really bad. Like I didn't like the how the black costume looked. Mm -hmm. It's like really CG, uh, and it kind of. You know, you can just tell when a CG thing is CG. Uh, but I can't. It's my freaking nitpick. Everything CG now. I don't like how the nano costume. Yeah, me either. Like, yeah. When it came on and off, it just looked I hate, lame. I honestly hate the whole nano costume in the MCU yeah. as a whole. But that's what this movie ends up being. is kind of like an antidote, adequately yeah. enough, 
to these things that were injected into Spider-Man. That didn't make him Spider-Man. Uh, courtesy of the Iron Man link, yeah. mostly, you know. Uh, that in all honesty, you know, and I even some big spider fans of this iteration were like, man, this is some Iron Man heavy shit. What's going on here? And I had to agree, even though I liked the first one, hated the second one, whatever. But, you know, it was too much, too much residual Iron Man-ness mm. in, in him, you know? So this, this right here is, is super cool, you know, and th that costume at the end looks fucking great. Yeah, it was cool. So, uh, uh you know. Oh, I gotta say the action, by the way, and this is fucking really exciting. The, the Spider-Man vs. Strange fight was super fucking badass. I gotta say, freaking Green Goblin has, like, the coolest fighting style in this. His he's costume, just, guy! He's just a straight-up freaking wrestler, dude. He, he's dude! power-bombing fools. Power he's rocks-bombing yeah. fools. It was awesome. It was, he's really cool in this. And, yeah, yeah. his costume's actually pretty cool. I loved it, man. Again, something that I wish I would have seen more of. Uh, but, again, it's so, it's so, like, perfectly paced that... I wonder what the use of that would be, other than to be awesome when the photo scenes. Like really minor nitpick, which is ends up. I like not... how you had zero nitpicks. And now you have a list, well, Christmas no, no. style. Well, no, because it ties into the Green Goblin thing. Okay. Much like Green Goblin, Doc Ock kind of disappears for a long time. That, well, he's uh, literally in a cell, okay. Oh fool! Uh, once he's out, All right? They, 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 he, he like leaves once he's good, and he disappears. But then he comes in at the end, and it was a cool moment, so I don't really mind it. Uh, again, very comic booky, you yeah. know. And uh, in a movie like this, but I was really I was works. thinking like, man, where's Doc Ock? was in this whole <laughs> this whole time. No, he was he was making use of uh, the stunties. Uh, yep, it was great. One in the butt. <sighs> they were everywhere, guy. Yeah. He found orifices. Anyway, um, what did uh, final thoughts on the score, guy? What was the score, guy? Oh, I'll give it a mad nine point five. Uh, on a good day, maybe even a tank, because it is really entertaining. Yeah, I'll give it a nine, nine point five. That is, mm -hmm. I don't know why I said nine first. Uh, you know, it's fucking great, guy, and and it really excites me for what's. In the oh, future. we didn't talk about the post credit scene, which was the Venom. We did in the other one, and it's a uh, fucking useless. Yep. Except, <laughs> except for the fact that they found a way. For a symbiote to exist in the MCU yeah. straight up. And yeah. we were just like, did they just fucking find a way to put yeah. a Venom in this universe? Because that would be great. Uh, you know, he left one of his offspring here in the universe. Uh, which, by the way, now that I think about it, negates the possibility of the theory that I had for Venom. Because his offspring would uh, continue having the hive knowledge. So he would have been returned to, mm. to the universe uh, when the, you know, the spell was... Uh, fixed or whatever yeah I'm done that's true so if that's the explanation then that motherfucker shouldn't be there either yeah, that's like great either way point. i am glad that they found a way to fucking have a possibly I, I hope that's what they're thinking i mean i can't think of anything else to have a fucking venom of their own uh because yeah, uh, you know what that stinky boy that's right when the when the symbiote also blinked back and what is that anyway whatever i mean it's definitely a thing that happened yeah. but anyway um so yeah, there you go. Uh, that's the week finally caught up. Took us a long while, and uh, there's a new one coming up sometime. So, oh god, we're gonna have to watch Morbius. Morbius. Stinky boy, uh, man. Even the people are trying to make excuses for Sony are not enjoying that one. So it doesn't look good. But mm -hmm. hey, we'll give it a shot. Maybe it will rock. Hey, but I'm gonna go ahead and guess that it won't. Anyway, uh, that's it. Let us know what you think about all these movies uh, in the comments down below. Music story times, all kinds of shit for you. Anything goes inside tonight, don't come and copy them too.